Hello everyone. Welcome to a lovely yarn podcast. My name is Amber. Today is Tuesday, Ju July 23rd, I think. And um, it's been about a month since I podcasted last. I didn't intend to go that long between episodes, but multiple things <laughs> contributed to that. The, the biggest one is just the fact that it's summer and I'm just not working as quickly on completing projects and I don't want to bore you guys with the same projects over and over again. So some of it comes down to not feeling like I have enough content and then also I've just been really busy living life with my family and doing the summer things which I'll, I can talk a little bit more about that at the end of the episode because I know that a lot of you are here just for the knitting. So I do actually have, despite the fact that I haven't been knitting as quickly because I just haven't been committing as much daily time to my knitting projects, I actually have uh, quite, a, I think, a pretty nice amount of projects to show you. Three summer tops, um, a couple pairs of socks, and a brand new granny square afghan that I just started this past weekend. So we're going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to show you my finished object. I only have one, but I I'm, I feel like my <clears throat> throat is groggy. It is still early. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, which is not really early, but it's the earliest I think I've ever filmed a podcast. My daughter and I are actually going to go have a fun mom and daughter day today. We're going to head down towards Pittsburgh. There is actually a, I think it's called Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse. It is, it's basically a thrift store for art supplies and craft supplies. We've never been there. I thought it sounded fun. She's looking for some fabric for some sewing projects she wants to do. So I needed to get this started early because we're leaving in about an hour. So my throat is a little froggy because I haven't really talked very much yet today. Um, but anyway, oh, I guess I should tell you what I'm wearing before I get into my finished object. So this is my Thea top. And I actually talked about this as a finished object last week. Who is the designer of this? It's, it's escaping my mind. Suzanne Mueller. And I knitted this in Barocco Remix Light in color 6993. I like this. Uh, maybe I should, let me just show you. I don't, I think I included some video last week or last episode. So I, I really like the fit of this and I like this yarn. Do you see? <laughs> it has nice drape. Um, however, as I said last week, I'm not a huge fan of this color. I, I don't know if it's, I wear more, I don't have a lot of black, but I do wear more black in like the winter months. So maybe that's what's throwing me off. It's summer and I'm not used to wearing black. I'm not sure. I will say that, um, I mentioned that last podcast and many of you said, oh, that color looks great on you. So thank you very much for that because <laughs> it bolstered my confidence a bit. And, um, but I'm wearing this today. I like this yarn, this Barocco Remix, and actually I have another project that I'll be showing you This um, that's made in the same yarn but a different color. And I also really like this tank pattern. I love the fit of it. I love the big straps here that hide my bra straps. And um, I like the way that it, like, if it's perfectly underneath my armpit, it's not digging in at all. Um, and I'm really happy with the length that I knit this as well. So that is what this is. I talked about it in more detail in my last episode, if you're interested in that. I'm sorry, I don't. So I will link everything down below as far as patterns and or I'll, I'll at least list the yarn name. Maybe I won't provide a direct link to a website, but I do not keep Ravelry pages be, uh, for my projects. I've, I've thought about, I know there's a benefit to it because I, use Ravelry to look at other people's projects and to look at yarn in specific projects and all that. So I kind of feel bad that I use it, but I don't use it in the way to be beneficial to other people, but it just feels like a big extra step. So what I normally, I have this knitting journal and 
I actually make notes in this as I knit patterns. So if I do any modifications or anything like that, I just write it all down. I would, I don't think that I would, it's just another extra step to take this information and to put it into Ravelry, which I don't want to take that time to do that. So, and I don't want to use Ravelry as a platform to do this for my own personal knowledge because it, and now let's get on. I've talked about what I'm wearing. Now let's talk about what I have finished. And that is this very beautiful seashore stroll by JST Knitwear Designs. Let me show you, I'll just show you the pattern picture first. It's black and white, so I don't know if it's going to be if real clear. I think you can see a pretty good representation of it. And that is, I loved this yoke and all like the different motifs. So this is mine. Whoa, that just did something to the color. <laughs> uh, I blocked it already. It, I folded it through the night and it's got this crease going down the middle, which, oh, well. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I did modify this quite a bit out of necessity to fit me and to fit my gauge. So I will go ahead and put some video in here to the side as I talk about it. I did a little video wearing this with my shorts. This is a bit cropped, so I'm going to be honest and say that I wouldn't actually wear this out with the shorts that I have on in the video because my belly does stick out if I lift my arm at all. But my main, I really wanted this sweater to wear over dresses and one sundress in particular that's like a linen blend, linen cotton blend dress. And I have also some video of that. So I'm going to, I'm going to show that video while I talk about this. Um, this was a fast knit for me. It would have been even faster had I not had to rip it out a couple of times uh, because I just was playing around so much with the, the size. So this yarn is Drops um, Saffron and it is color number 59. It's like a rusty coral color, which this is one of my favorite colors. I love this color. So I started this on June 29th and I finished it July 17th. So I feel like that was fairly fast, although it is a top. This is driving me nuts here. <laughs> Go away. I didn't see it till I started filming. I'm like, why is that so pronounced there? Uh, I don't know. I must've twisted something. So the, the biggest thing is, hold on, let me look here. I was trying to decide whether I should knit the size two or the size three. And the cast on for the neck seemed really large for the size that I wanted to knit, which I still wasn't certain about. <laughs> but I think like for the size three, the cast on stitches seemed like a large amount of stitches. So I ended up casting on less and I don't know how I figured out how many less stitches to cast on. I can't remember that process, but I cast on less stitches. And then after the ribbing, I just did a round of increasing. And I use a little tool that I have on my phone. It's an app and I'm pretty sure it's free or maybe I paid a couple of bucks, like a one-time fee, but it's nice. I'll put the name of it down below. I can't currently think of what it's called. It's nice because if you need to do increases or decreases, you can put in the stitches you have on your needle and the stitches you want to get to, and then it'll calculate and tell you how to do the increases or decreases. There's also other tools on there that you can use, but I would say that's probably the one that I use the most. So after I did the ribbing, I increased to the stitches I needed for a size three. And then I worked down through, I started working down through the sections of the yoke. So each of these, like these are motif sections. And after I did the second section, which was this, this one right here, this is like eyelets. And then this is some pearl and knit. And then this, these are eyelets. And then you get into pearl and knit to make this motif. But after I got the second one done, I decided that I did not want to knit the size three. It was going to be too big. And here's the thing, my gauge was off, but as per usual, I didn't do a gauge swatch. 
I'm going to be honest, I don't do gauge swatches very often. Um, usually when I do them, it's because it's when I'm doing a test knit. So I just don't do gauge swatches very often, which is not a good thing. I'm not saying that that's what you should do. <laughs> just saying that if I'm going to be honest, I don't gauge swatch very often. So um, I ended up then increasing in the next increase section, I increased to the number of stitches I would need for a size two. So I switched from a size three to a size two. And then I did this wheat. This is like a wheat motif. And I realized that if I, there were actually, I think two more motifs after, after this. And I thought, oh my gosh, if I do those, my yoke depth is going to be so deep and it's going to be annoying. I'm not going to wear this. So I ended up stopping the yoke right after this. And instead of doing an eyelet round here, because I didn't want it to be see-through right across like my breast, I just did uh, two rounds of pearls. So like two, like a pearl ridge. And then I divided for my sleeves and all of that. And I basically, then I, I literally modified this so heavily to try to get it to fit my body and to, to fit with my gauge, which I, at one point probably would have been like very intimidated by that. But I was, you know, I've since adapted the thought that why would I like, I can knit my own clothes so that they fit me just the way I like them. So why would I not do that? So when I actually picked up stitches for the sleeves under, you know, under the arms, I made these, these sleeves are set for size one. So they have the stitch count for size one. And then, um, the body, I ripped it out two times to get it the right width because the first time I thought it was going to be too big. So I didn't increase to enough stitches. And then I realized, oh, it's going to be too tight. I did not want this. I, I wanted positive ease. So I ripped that out and then I increased to a higher number of stitches, but not as many stitches as I should have for the size one. Now keep in mind, my gauge was bigger. So I was trying to keep that in mind. And then I realized, no, that's still not going to be big enough. So then I ripped that out. Now I had, I did put, I was smart and I did put a lifeline in. So <laughs> use lifelines. It makes it a lot easier. And, um, on the third time I got it right. And it did, this actually did block out as well. This yarn does block quite a bit. It's very slinky, which is nice. And I used 156 grams. These, these skeins are sold in 50 gram skeins. I used three of them and then six grams from the fourth skein. So, um, oh, and another thing with this, I started knitting these on my metal needles because I have wooden needles and I have metal needles, but my metal needles were so, this yarn was so slippery on that, on those that it was kind of making this project really unenjoyable. So I texted my friend Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces, who was also my neighbor. And, and because I couldn't find the size four wooden needle, it must be on a project somewhere or I've just misplaced it. I'm not sure. So I texted her and I'm like, do you have an extra size four wooden needle that I could borrow while I finish the sweater? Because the metal is the metal needles are making this so unenjoyable. So she let me borrow her. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's L Y K K E like a like I should, I was going to look it up and then I forgot. Um, so I ran down and got those. And it made it so much nicer, so much nicer. I really enjoyed knitting this after that because the metal ones were just making it very challenging because the yarn just kept wanting to slip off the needles. So that's something to remember. Like if you're knitting with, I think especially with plant-based fibers, they do tend to be more slippery. And so the metal needles can make it a little bit of a battle in trying to keep your stitches in place. Okay, I had to pause. I was just breaking out into a sweat. My glasses were starting to fog up. I needed to put my hair up. My hair, hair, long hair is a great insulator. <laughs> and unfortunately at this season and age of life, I just don't handle it very well. Okay. So that was my only finished object. Now let's move on to uh, my whips. And I've shown you this one before. This is my Yume. So I mispronounced this last time. 
which I was questioning how to pronounce this because I thought it would be pronounced, it's spelled Y-U-M-E, and I thought it would be pronounced Yumi. That's what my instinct was telling me. But I had watched another podcast and she had pronounced it Yum. So, which phonetically is how in English, American English anyway, that is how you would pronounce it if you follow the phonetic rules. But then I had a viewer comment that um, it's actually pronounced Yume. It's a, I think she said it's a Japanese word. So um, this is my Yume sweater by Isabel Kramer. And it's a little wrinkly because it's been shoved in my bag. This is knit in the Barocco Remix Light in the Strawberry Colorway, which is a really fun, beautiful color. And I'm actually to the point now where I'm going to start ribbing, I think. I We just went camping this past weekend, and I took this with me along with a couple of other projects. And I worked on this one until I got to where I thought I would need to start the ribbing. But then I I wanted to wait, and I wanted I'm, I want to lay it down across my... My, my first Yume that I made, which um, is also made in the same yarn because I like the length of that one, so I want to make this one pretty much identical. I'm using size five needles. Don't remember if that's what the pattern calls for, but that's what I'm using, and I'm knitting the size one. So I don't have a whole lot to say about this other than I really like this pattern. It is easy. I like yoked patterns. Um, oops, I have it backwards. It does have short row shaping and it just has this really simple like zigzaggy pattern at the top or motif I guess and then it will just be really short sleeves. The sleeves are super easy to do and yeah. Um, hey one thing I want to talk about though uh, Game Changer this barber pole and I know that people use this and have been using it for a while I just bought a big spool of it on Amazon. I'll, I'll try to remember to link that down below because this makes it so easy to do things like this or to transfer stitches. It's just, I, I paid, I think $7 for this spool. Uh, I don't remember how many yards. It's a ton. It's more than I'll ever need. Um, and I, it's just, it was so worth it. The only thing is it has a little bit of a smell, like a plasticky rubbery smell, which I had read about in the comments. So I'm assuming that that will eventually go away, but it isn't the most pleasant smell, but I will say that it is just a game changer <laughs> for knitting and beyond being able to put it on your needles and let you try it on, you know, easily. It's just, I love this stuff anyway. Okay. So I really like this yarn. I've decided this is my first time, this summer is my first time using it. It's the same yarn as my Thea top and my first Yume. And then this is the second one. And then I have enough in a yellow color that I'm actually going to make a long sleeved, I think I'm going to make a long sleeved ranunculus out of that to have for the fall and winter. Even though this is a summer yarn, it's like a cotton linen it's like a recycle, has some recycled fibers in it. Um, as I alluded to just minutes ago, I am running hot these days and I don't know that I'll be able to wear my wool sweaters, <laughs> which is so sad to me. And so I was thinking, I'm just going to have to adapt what I, how I knit things and what I knit. And so I think that if I did this long sleeved, which she includes instructions on how to do either short sleeves or long sleeves, but do this in this yarn in that yellow color. I think I should be fine being able to wear that in the house, um, in the cooler months or cold months. Okay. My most recent cast on is a pattern by Kadri. Last podcast, I think I showed the yarn for this and said that I was going to start knitting this soon. This was a pattern that I first saw on Young Folk Knits. Casey was doing as a test knit and I really, really liked the look and shape of it. So I bought the same yarn that Casey used only in a different color. Um, and this is the Lila Top by Kadri. I think this is my very first Kadri pattern. I don't believe I've knit any other patterns by her. So this is what I have so far. 
uh, this is the top that I'm holding together, but let me just show you what it looks like. So after you knit down through the entire body of this, you're going to put um, I-cord straps here for the shoulders. I think that I'm going to follow suit with, with Casey and do like a thicker strap so that it covers my bra straps. I think that's what I'm going to do. But this is, this yarn is Pasquale Nepal, Nepal. It's cotton, linen, and nettle. And this is colorway 10. So Pasquale Nepal. And I forget what the color name is, like green grass or something like that, but I love this color. It's such a nice color. It's not showing up on camera as it is. That might, right there, yeah. So um, let's talk about this. This is knit, the front and back are knit exactly the same and you're doing increases for the curve of like the armpit and then you eventually join in the round. So this is not hard knitting at all. It's not hard. Um, I made a note here that I need to look in my knitting notebook because I could not get gauge with this yarn. So according to the measurement schematics, I should be knitting a size five in this. And my gauge was 22 stitches per four inches. The patterns gauge was 24 stitches per four inches. This is to be knit in a fingering weight yarn. I am knitting on a size US three needle and um, I started knitting it with the size, like the size five, the one that I was supposed to, according to the measurements. But then I'm like, this is looking really big. Like the back and forth here, it was huge. It, it was really big. And I did not consider, take into consideration that my gauge was bigger than the patterns gauge. So that was going to make mine bigger than what it was supposed to be. So I ripped it out and I ended up using that little formula that you can use that I had forgotten about, but is so very helpful where you can take your gauge. Basically you can take any pattern, any yarn within reason, probably this may not always work, but for the most part, this will work. You can get your gauge. So you do, you have to do a gauge swatch. <laughs> and I used, because I had knit so much the first time before I ripped it out, I just used that as my gauge swatch before ripping it out. I measured it. So I knew. So you take your gauge, you take your desired chest circumference, like whatever you want that to be. And then you look at your stitches per inch in your gauge and you multiply that times what size you want, like what circumference, the number of inches or centimeters or whatever. And then that gives you a total number of stitches. Then you look at in your pattern at the body stitches, the total number of body stitches. Then you look in your pattern and you find the size that has the closest to that amount of stitches. And then you go with that size. I have no idea if this is making sense. So I'm just going to link the blog post from Tin Can Knits on how to do this down below. I have used this multiple times and it's always worked out for me. So I think that in most cases this will work. So when I, when I used this little formula, I realized that I should be knitting a size three, not a size five, not a size four. So I started over, I ripped it all out again and I started over and that is what I'm knitting now. I'm knitting a size three, but this is just another, um, like one of those reminders that it's gauge is really important, <laughs> which I know that I just get lazy and I don't, I just want to get into the project. So this is going to fit. I have it on the um, barber pole so I could show you cause I have it. I'm knitting it on a rather small cable. Yeah. And again, this is one of those yarns that is very slippery and it, the metal needles, it's really slipping off. So I'm just, I'm just going with it. I already gave Jody her needles back and I'm thinking, I think the smallest size that she had in that kit was 
a size four anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered because I'm knitting on a size three. I will say I'm not sure how I feel about this yarn. I love the color, and it's not that I don't like the yarn, but there has been a lot of, at least in the first skein, I just joined my second skein this morning, but the first skein that I used, there were a lot of unspun areas that gave like big, see those nubs? Now, if I was really super picky, what I could have done and would have done was cut my yarn and then just rejoined it where that unspun portion was not. But I honestly do not like, I, I knew that by doing that, I was still going to have some extra fabric there because when you weave in your ends, you get, it gets a little bit thicker in that area. So I just went with it. I don't expect, nor do I really want perfection in my hand knits. Um, but there are multiple areas where it's, can you see that right there? And it's just because the yarn was not spun. It's a fingering weight. This is a fingering weight yarn, but in those unspun areas, it was definitely more like a DK weight sport to a DK weight. So I don't know if that is consistent with this yarn across the board, or if I just got a skein that was poorly spun. I guess I'll find out as I work through this one. When I look at this skein from everything I can see right now, I don't see any unspun areas, but I don't know what I'm going to get to in the middle. Okay, moving on. I have two more whips to show you and they're just my socks. So this is going to be super quick because I don't have a lot of progress on them and it's, they're just vanilla socks done in two different colors of Drops Fable yarn. So this is the first one. And this is a really pretty purple color. I'm doing the toe in a contrast. And I, I think this might have been Flower Hill Fleeces, but I don't know that for, for certain. And I will see if I have... This is a color number, so I'll just put it down below. I got this Drops Fable on sale last year for like a dollar. or It was like a pound something. So it was probably around, around $2, two US dollars. And then my other pair of drops fable, I have one sock completed except for weaving in ends and I need to graft the toe shut. I actually really like doing the grafting on a toe. I just didn't, I, I don't have, every time I take these with me, I forget to throw in a darning needle. So I haven't done that yet. But um, I have the, this one done, and this is my second one. So I'm just, I'm still doing the decreases on the gusset. This is a really fun color, but it does really remind me of winter. I find these colors to be very wintry, like the blues and that white. This, so the Drops Fable is number 914 and then the solid color is knit picks stroll fingering and sapphire heather yeah and so far i've only used one skein these are 50 gram skeins and i've only used one skein so i'm i'm gonna get uh this is like a for this is like a male sock it's the size nine and a half men's uh 10 maybe even and i'm getting i'm gonna have like some left i think so that's pretty cool okay last project and it's not a knitting project it is a crochet project and i am loving this and i have been wanting to do this since last year when i bought this kit this is the fireside blanket by lucy of attic 24 here's the picture of it that is so pretty. So I originally saw this on Danny of Little Bobbins Knits, I think is the name of her podcast. She doesn't really podcast anymore. She was a big podcaster back in the day. <laughs> and um, I think after she had her son, and she might have more than one child now, but I think after she had her son, it just, you know, that's what happens when you have young children. It's, you know, you just don't have as much time. But I used to faithfully watch her podcast episodes and she posted one last year at some point and I was so excited and I watched it and she had knit this blanket. I think she had already finished it at that point 
And after I saw her episode, I got on Wool Warehouse and I ordered this kit. And I am just now starting it. Which, speaking of blankets, I know that I've had a couple of you reach out about the um, Jimmy Bean's wool blanket, uh, like the kit, and the um, monthly knit. <clears throat> so what happened was, I'm still working on that, but I lost steam. In March, my pattern didn't come through my email, so I contacted them. And I, cause I don't access it the same as people who bought it. I, I did a collaboration with them. So I actually received the pattern for free and it was not coming to me. Like I didn't have an account set up that I could access it. It was being emailed to me and they didn't email it in March. And, and I contacted them the end of March and then she kindly sent it, but it didn't come until April. So I'd already missed a whole month. <laughs> and for some reason, plus I was having those health problems back in January through April with the heart stuff. And I just wasn't on my game with that. So I'm, I'm definitely going to complete that project. It's that it's just that I have not gotten past January and February squares. Those are completed, but I haven't done anything past that. So, um, you've, some of you have asked, I'm going to work on that. Just, I'm not sure when, probably not until like the winter. Um, yeah, but this, so this is the kit, all this yarn, and I'm doing it exactly the way that she has, uh, printed out. So I'm pretty sure this is a free, free pattern. This is really nice because I literally do not need to think about it. She has every square already mapped out with the color that she suggests. And so I don't think I just crochet and it's wonderful. I have had this in my closet since last year when I bought it and we went on a camping trip this past weekend. And I thought I'm going to take that kit and I'm going to get started on this. And I'm so glad I did because I got, where are my squares? Here we go. Let me show you what I've gotten done. So eight squares, just as she's written it, it smells like campfire. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm weaving in the ends as I go, which she recommends because, oh my gosh, that's the problem. I love, okay. I have a humongous love for granny squares. I was a crocheter since I was a little kid, uh, long before I was a knitter, I crocheted. I have always loved granny squares. I love the look of them. I love making them. What I don't really care for is all the ends you have to weave in when you're changing colors. Uh, so a lesson that I have learned after my very first granny square blanket, I made my daughter when she was little and I waited until I was all done crocheting it to weave in all the ends. And that was torture for me. <laughs> so I have learned to weave in ends as I go. So I crochet a square and then I weave all the ends in before I crochet the next square. So this is actually a join as you go method, which I wasn't sure that I would like that at first, but now I'm realizing that is super convenient because I'm not going to have to stitch all these squares together. And it's really... Um, quite ingenious how she has you join them. You can see my join there. Uh, this one I did backwards. <laughs> but I am loving this, this, these colors. And I said, I was talking to my mom cause she was watching me make this a bit when we were camping. And I was saying how I would not put some of these colors together. Like some of them are really appealing to me. And then others, I'm just like, mm, no, but when they're all together, I think that they're just going to look fantastic. It's going to be such a cozy looking blanket. It's going to feel like a cozy blanket. And I'm really excited to be making this. This yarn is um, Stylecraft Highland Heathers DK. And again, this, this kit, I think it was, I think it ended up costing me like $34 US dollars. So for all of this yarn, 
I feel like that's a really good deal. And I'm not a big fan of acrylic yarn. This is 100% acrylic. So I do prefer to work with wool or like natural fibers, but for, for blankets, I want to be able to throw them in the wash and not worry about them like falling apart or stretching out or anything like that. So I don't mind using acrylics when I'm making blankets. And this is actually a really nice acrylic yarn. You know, some yarns are super, they're either like super stiff and scratchy or they're just really plasticky feeling. Um, this one, I mean, it, it does feel like you can tell it's acrylic, but it's not, it, I, I don't mind working with it. So that is my fireside blanket, Lucy of Attic 24. And I, like I said, I'm pretty sure the pattern is free. I know that it's definitely free on her blog. She does like a tutorial blog posts for it. So if you want to do your own colors and you have yarn laying around, <clears throat> then you can just get on there, hop on her blog post and start your own. But this has been really fun. Okay, so that is the end of my knitting content. And I'm going to be wrapping this up because I need to leave soon. But I don't know if, um, what did I talk about when I last podcasted? It's been a month. So we had Lily's graduation party. I think that would have happened after my last episode. So that was fun. We just did a camping trip. Um, we've just had lots of summer activities and it's been, we, oh, well, my garden though, my, my garden. <laughs> I, I think, I don't think I've ever had such a poor garden <laughs> as I have this year. And it's not just me. It is most of the people that I talk to, at least locally, are not having much luck with their garden. And we have been in, they haven't called it a drought, but it's definitely been drought-like conditions. When you walk on our grass, it's brown and it crunches and it kind of hurts to walk on. It's not at all like green or soft. And I have to be careful watering because we have a well and it's not a tremendously good well. So I have to watch because if I'm washing dishes and washing laundry and we're getting showers, which I mentioned this in my last episode, I think. So the garden is very subpar this year, which is kind of sad, especially since uh, I usually have so many zinnias and cosmos and eh, I hardly have any, like only, I had a lot of problems with seeds not germinating this year. I had a lot of seeds that didn't germinate um, from all different seed companies. So it wasn't at first I thought, Oh, it's this, they sent me bad seeds, but then it, I replanted with different seeds. And it, so I'm just not sure what's going on. It's just not a good gardening year, which that's when you're a gardener, especially when you're an organic gardener, you just have to go with the flow and realize that you're going to have some good years and you're going to have some bad years. <laughs> so this is a bad year. Um, yeah. So what else? Anything else? I don't think, I don't think so. Um, oh, one more thing before I go, I wanted to mention a new podcast that I recently discovered, I think last week or the week before, and it is called What Mariel Made, and she's relatively new to podcasting, but she's very, I really enjoy watching her. She's very calming. I love her voice. Um, she does knitting, spinning, and sewing, and, um, you know, you, I say, I've said this before, but sometimes you just for whatever reason, you just click with a certain podcast or podcaster style. And I've definitely noticed that with Mariel's videos, they definitely, I just find them very soothing, calming, and interesting all at the same time. So I've really been enjoying those videos and, um, I look forward to her coming out. Like when she came out with this week's episode, I was really excited. Like some podcasters, you just get really excited when you see they have a new episode up <laughs> and she's one of my new favorites. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to her as well. In case any of you are interested, you can go check her out. And I think that is it for this podcast episode. Hopefully I will be back sooner than a month from now. <laughs> It'll all depend on what I get up to and how much knitting I get done. I just don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it. I want to do I want to do this because I have something to share with you all. 
I don't want to waste your time, you know? So, um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I will be back with some new projects and some finished projects as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, I would, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could subscribe to the channel as well, that would be fantastic. And I would be very appreciative of that. Again, you can find all the links to everything I talked about as well as where I am on other social media platforms down below in the video description and have a wonderful day and enjoy your knitting and whatever, whatever other crafting that you are up to. And I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.